Ever since I was little, I have loved horses. My parents put me on a horse for the first time at a farmer's market when I was about three years old. And when it was time for me to get off, I refused. They then knew that this was something I would be doing for the rest of my life. Horseback riding is very popular on my dad's side of the family. Him and his three siblings grew up on a ranch in Calgary with their parents. His father was the head of the judges for the Olympics for riding, his mother was a trainer, and his older sister rode for Canada and Olympics twice. So it was no surprise that I would want to pursue the sport as well. Every summer, I visit a small island in Canada called Hornby. This was the first place I took riding lessons. An older woman that lived on the island owned a pony named Princessa, who I was taught lessons on. I soon after began taking lessons and participating in summer camps locally. I rode at all different stables until I decided to take lessons at San Domenico. I had been riding a horse named Star for my lessons a lot, and for my 11th birthday, my parents purchased her for me. I was totally surprised and so excited that I now had a horse. I've been asking for one forever, but I was never sure if I'd ever get one. I owned Star for roughly a year and had a seller because she was getting older and could no longer jump. I sold her to a young girl who also rode at San Domenico, so I could still see her all the time. Conveniently, there was a horse already at the stable that I'd be able to advance on named Bodhi. After riding him a few times, it seemed to be a good match, so we bought him. I went to my first big horse show on him, and he seemed to be working out great. Towards the end of the year, he was no longer acting like himself, making it difficult for me to ride him. He threw me off at a show and over a railing at the stable, which was a sure sign that it was no longer a good match. Fortunately, a really sweet horse was available to buy at the stable, and my parents understood that I could no longer ride Bodhi. His name was Sage, and in the spring, my parents purchased him for me. He was one of the friendliest horses and always was on his best behavior. When my trainer at San Domenico decided to move out to Baywood, I brought Sage and Bodhi out there with me. We sold Bodhi to the owner of the stable, which worked out conveniently. Sage was perfect all summer, at the shows and at the stable, and I was really happy with him. I soon decided in my freshman year that I wanted to compete in more shows and advance further, causing me to switch stables out to one in Petaluma. Sage seemed fine with the move and was acting well until he began to no longer want to jump or be ridden very much at all. We were soon going to have the vet take a look at him, but we didn't get to it in time. In early December during second period, I was working on a project in the library when I got a text from my dad. He said to call him right away, but I told him I was in the class and couldn't. After he asked once more and I said no again, he told me it was about Sage and that it was important. I immediately had a bad feeling and I asked my teacher if I could go call him. When she said yes, I walked outside quickly and called. He told me that during the night, Sage had broken his leg in his stall and there was nothing we could do. I began to cry in the hallway and was soon picked up by my mom to go say goodbye. We drove through the valley and to Petaluma as quickly as possible, arriving to the vet, who was trying to make him as comfortable as he could be. I didn't know how to react at first, seeing my horse for the last time, but I tried to make the best of it. I gave him lots of cookies and hugs, but it still hadn't hit me that this would be the last time I would see him. As the day went on, I began to become more upset though. I still didn't understand how this could have happened. I didn't ride for a few weeks after that and I was nervous to go out to the barn since being there last because I wasn't sure how I'd feel. When I went out there and rode one of their horses, I missed riding Sage but I was feeling alright. Later in the spring, my trainer had me come down to a show in Pebble Beach to try a horse she had found for me, who is currently my horse today. Her name is Clarissa and although she isn't the friendliest horse I've ever come across, she has allowed me to advance the most and compete at the level I want to. Throughout my previous horses and current horse today, I have changed as a rider and have had great experiences. Each one has taught me something new and I am grateful for them. Although I wish I never had to sell any of them and let go of one, I have learned that horses are clearly not predictable but also something you must appreciate the privilege of having. It's a